Hello and welcome back to the Wrexham Way. Hope you're all doing well and looking forward to today's episode and it's Champions League knockout time. Today we've got the first leg of that Champions League first knockout round against Porto away from home in the first leg. Hopefully we get a decent result. Before that though we have a Premier League game against relegation threatened Sheffield United. Hopefully we have some better results today than we have done in recent episodes. Now, you've caught me at a bit of a bad time, actually, because I'm crying tears of happiness and sadness. Happiness, because I've just ordered new PC parts, which is fantastic. Sadness, because I've just ordered new PC parts and uh, <laughs> it costs money. It's not nice. But soon, in the next uh, couple weeks or so, I'll have a brand new PC, which is very exciting. And hopefully videos will take uh, a bit of an upward trend in quality because I think I'm kind of at the limits of what we can do in terms of video quality right now. With a new PC, I think we should see some nice improvements. I mean, 60 frames per second should be like the norm. Not that you need 60 frames per second in Football Manager, but it'd be, be quite nice. Anyway, focusing back on the game, we have been crying mostly tears of happiness since you guys were last here. Now, of course, we had our awful run of fixtures running through here against some very decent teams, and we just could not get a win in the slightest. Things were not looking good for us, and it wasn't particularly great. Obviously, you were last here for the loss to West Brom and then the draw to Manchester United. And that kind of felt like it was going to be at the tail end of the bad news because the teams we had in the next few weeks were all at the bottom end of the table. And to be fair, it worked out quite nicely. We started off with a 2-0 win against Crystal Palace with Frank Nice getting both of the goals in that game. We then rotated the team completely playing a second string team and lost 3-0 to Newcastle in the EFL Cup quarter final. But I'll be honest, I'm not too fussed about being dropped out of the Cups, particularly if it means we can start to do better in the Premier League. We then had quite a gap in between the two fixtures without international breaks. So I presume it's just sort of like that winter break uh, or winter two weeks of breaking, whatever it is in the Premier League that they start to do now. But in that time, I thought to get some morale into this team, let's play two teams in some friendlies. We played Linfield and Glenetron, and we managed to win 9-0 and 3-0. So hopefully plenty of momentum was put into those players, good morale put into the players then. And it worked actually, because for the rest of January, we did not lose a game. We won the FA Cup third round, 3-1 against Sheffield United. Great stuff for us there, before beating them in the league 6-0. Absolutely superb results there. There, although Daniel Patrick did get injured for a month in that game, so he's only just coming back from injury. We then had a rather frustrating 3-3 draw with Southampton, a little bit of a blip for us. That was frustrating. It did kind of prove that maybe we're not quite fixed just yet, but a 2-0 win against a struggling Arsenal side who seemed to be in the same bit of free fall that we were in back in November, December time. They're also in this kind of free fall now, Arsenal, so we've taken advantage of that and beaten them 2-0. We beat Bristol City 2-1, QPR 3 3 0, but then lost the FA Cup fourth round 2 1 to Hull, playing a rotated team. And again, out the FA Cup, I'm not actually that fussed about it. But although we've had some great results in between episodes, obviously other teams around us also having great results. We still find ourselves outside of those Champions League places, which we could go back inside with a win and get the game in hand against Tottenham 1. It would put us back into fourth place by a singular point but we'd still at that stage be a long way off the top spot with Man City, Leicester and Man United leading the way with a bit of a gap into fourth place. So we need to be at our best for the rest of the season if we want to have a chance of catching them up. What we're going to focus more on, I think, for the rest of the season, because this league table is looking very, very tricky for us, is, of course, the Champions League taking on Porto today away from home to start off with. Hopefully, we see teams like Man United, Liverpool, last season's finalists knocked out. If PSG and Bayern Munich can get knocked out as well, that would be even better for us as well because I think those two are probably the favourites, you'd say, for the Champions League. Now, we've also played through January and we've had to reject plenty of bids for Frank Nice, including 10 in one day that came through on deadline day for Frank Nice, uh, all of them for £148 million. Same thing we had at the end of last um, trans window in summer. They just won't go above £148 million but they keep bidding it 10 times. So that was a bit frustrating. Also, Perea kind of wants to leave the club. He got actually quite cross this time when we rejected bids from Bayern Munich, but the bids for Bayern Munich never got anywhere near the £200 million that they bid for him a few seasons ago, which is surprising now that he is the best player in the world, at least according to Goal 50, because the Ballon d'Or came out 
and he came second in Ballon d'Or with Frank Nice in third. Holland leading the way in virtually everything, so congratulations to him. Paniotov also made it into the FIFA Team of the Year, whatever it's called, and Pereira onto the bench, so a bit annoyed Perez not in the first team. But at least Paniotov is in there, and that is absolutely fantastic. I mean, the amazing thing about Paniotov is he's in the Team of the Year, and we picked him up for £4.3 million. And he's literally now one of the best players in the world. I love it. I also love it how we just took a bit of a punt on him. Like, I don't think we had full scouting knowledge on him. And we certainly didn't know we were going to get him to play for us because he had no work permit. We had to send him out on loan to get a work permit first. So there were a lot of hoops to jump through and we got very lucky. But I think it will be a topic of video coming out later this weekend, I reckon. Also, January came and went, and we have made a couple of signings, particularly young strikers coming into the team. We did say we wanted a backup. We have got rid of Monoz, if we can find him on here somewhere. Um, there he is, Monoz, leaving for £84,000 to Atletico Nacional. Never developed for us, was never that good, so we've let him go on his way to leave the club. He's been replaced by two young strikers coming in. We'll start off with uh, this guy. Now, don't laugh at his name, lads. He can't choose his name, but uh, Edward Seaman, fantastic name. He's coming into the club. Now, his finishing is a little bit weak, but everything else I think is fantastic. And he is branded as a wonder kid as well. So hopefully we'll see some good work from Seaman at some point. <laughs> Even I'm laughing now. Despite the finishing being lower, he's certainly already a better player than Munoz and is a regular in the Slovakian national setup too. So I'm expecting to see some good stuff from him at some point. The player that I'm more excited about though, signing for £2.4 million, is uh, Sopcic, which I think is maybe how you say his name. He is a Croatian striker who we've beaten so many clubs to get now. He's probably going to be like a false nine, I would say, in the future for us more than anything else but already valued at 50 to 67 million pounds five stars of potential this guy is incredible we beat a whole host of clubs to him as well arsenal chelsea Inter, juventus psg interest man city leicester west ham newcastle atalanta all of these clubs wanted him we got him which shows how good we are but obviously they are here to be backup players and you know if you guys in the end want to play with safe file into the future because when we finish this i think we'll give it out to everyone uh obviously players for the future that you can use anyway this is the team that hopefully is going to be picking up the win against sheffield united here today kamara starts in goal with balestra luis felipe hoya and neto starting in that back line tarpe paniotov and then jez finley and asper start in the midfield today because daniel patrick coming back from that injury your Turk also injured as well vasco Sousa is recovering from an injury, not quite fit enough to play here today. So Jez Finley and Asper start the team with Nice and Perea leading the line. So we find ourselves approaching the business end of the season. We are well over the halfway mark in the Premier League season. We're getting to that point of the Champions League campaign now where we get to knock out football and it is relentless. So we have to be on our very, very best from here until the end of the season. Hopefully, we've got all of those nerves, those jitters, that bad bit of form out of our way. <sighs> Look, let's pretend this never happened and we can just talk about, you know, getting the bad form, the bad luck, all of that nerves out of our system back in November, December when we kept losing games. You know, we got rid of it all then. We're going to focus now on the end of the season for a big battle in the Champions League and getting ourselves back up into at least those Champions League places in the Premier League. Of course, we gave ourselves three seasons to win the Champions League and this is the second of those three seasons. We've got three attempts essentially to do it. And if we don't do it in that time, we won't ever win a Champions League. So we have the choice. I say have the choice. We have the ability to win the Champions League this season, fulfill that criteria, or we could win it next season. However, if we don't finish in the top four in the Premier League this season, we will not have that chance to win the Champions League because we won't qualify for it. So really, it's actually getting a little bit perilous here in the Premier League, particularly the longer we stay behind Sheffield United here today. And this highlight is a long one by the looks of things. We need to get ourselves forward and scoring goals as Paniotov into Tarpe over the top to Perea, who wins the ball, brings it down and puts it in the back of the net for his 20th of the season. Beautifully done there, right on cue as well. And that is what we need. And if we could grab a second goal just before half-time, 
This would be absolutely superb for us. Perea on the ball. Into Frank Nice, who's got one man to beat. Goes to Bethel Asper instead. Into Jez Finley. This is superb passing around the penalty area. But we just couldn't quite put it in the back of the net there. Keeper making a really solid save there. Keeping Sheffield United in this game. Who need the points themselves to maintain their Premier League status. But, if you know, I'd like to think all those players are big watchers of the Wrexham way. And so they'd understand that we need at least top four for Champions League next season. And they'd want to help us do that. So if they want to just start lying down and letting us win, that would be absolutely fantastic. But uh, they don't seem to want to do that just yet as Jez Finley does win possession in the end after losing it briefly. Luis Felipe now forward into Paniotov as the ball is on the edge of the D, of the D, of the centre circle. It's now on the edge of the D and Paniotov shoots from the edge of the D and puts it wide. What is the point of the D, by the way? I don't know. I've never thought of this before in football. But just saying it out loud then, what, what is the point of it? There's probably like a TIFO video that probably explains it somewhere because there's always a TIFO video explaining something like that. But if anyone knows, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'd love to know about it. Also, whilst you're down there, make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe if you're new around here. That would be absolutely lovely. What we need to do, though, is get Jez Finley off the pitch and bring Vasco Sousa on because we are struggling in the midfield. Let's bring Daniel Patrick on as well. Actually, we swap those two over. And Neto's not playing great. Let's bring Dest on. And go a little bit more attacking because we need to get this win. I mean, the match stats are quite heavily in our favour. We just seem to be bottling all our opportunities by looks of things. Uh, let's also shout encourage out there to the players too. And we might swap some roles around in the final 15, 10 minutes or so. And I think we're going to have to. Okay, right. Sousa, you move forward. Tarpe moves into the middle. Sousa, you become a shadow striker on attack. We'll get the wing backs going, shall we? On attack. Push them forward. Look for a goal here. We need these points. Now, luckily, Palace are thrashing Man United 4-1 right now. So that's really good for us. Everyone stood off. If this goes in, everyone stood offside. So it's not going to count. Every single player of ours is offside there. So that's frustrating. Yep, goal disallowed easily. And we can see from the replay when it comes through that Hoyer, one, two, three, four. Maybe only three players, actually, rather than four. But there were definitely three players offside. Vasco's corner then, putting it into the middle. And just put over the bar by Luis Felipe. We can really get something at the end of this game here. I'm going to go very attacking. I'm going to shout encourage again. But is this overdoing it? And will Sheffield grab themselves a goal right at the end here? Pereira on the ball then. Gets it out wide. Puts one into the middle. Nice is there. Can't quite get above the keeper who collects that comfortably in the end. And he will clear it out from the back. Now, will he send it long? He does. And luckily, Hoyer's there to collect that one nicely, bringing it down comfortably. And his ball forward is terrible, but Vasper does win it in the middle. Daniel Patrick through to Nice. Nice shoots from distance, putting it just wide of the mark. Will we get another chance? I don't know, because I'm also seeing that Liverpool and Arsenal are taking points off each other. They're drawing right now. This would be a great way for us to catch up a little bit to those teams in the top four. And we might have just done it through Hoyer's header there. We're going to drop back down now to positive rather than be on very attacking. We'll leave it as it is for the final few minutes because we have been having some great chances to get forward. Although, is this a mistake? As Daniel Patrick over to Perea, who can't win it. And now we've got a situation where should I have switched back to fullbacks and a CDM? Because here come Sheffield. And they don't score just yet. Sheffield United being stopped there in the penalty area. But the ball back in there. Are they not all offside? Are they... Now, the goal was not offside. The question marks will be, were the other players in the attack in the build-up to that offside? And I'm not sure they were. I'm not sure they were. Goal disallowed. Oh, we've been lucky there. So, so lucky. So when the ball is played, I did notice there were quite... Oh, yeah, they are all offside. There's like three or four of them offside. But when the actual cross was put in for the shot, the player who took the shot was onside. We've been let off there. Let off there significantly. But that's a really, really good match for us. We've got three points where Man United have dropped points. Liverpool and Arsenal have drawn with each other, dropping points. Uh, Man City did win, but they beat Tottenham. So we go ahead of Tottenham with a game in hand on them. And we're now only four points behind Man United. But... 
we are still nine points off Man City. Although we do have a game in hand. Okay. Right, what we need to do then before this Porto game is make sure that we rest everyone for at least a day. Training, rest, one day. Good, because we need to be on fine form for the game against Porto. We are playing away from him to start off with, and that will be difficult. Okay, so, uh, who needs a bit of a rest? Well, actually, let's put it this way. Who needs to come on the pitch? Daniel Patrick, I think, should come on the pitch. Definitely. Your Mazturk's still not quite fit enough, so we'll leave on the pitch Jez Finley. Nice and Pere will stay. In fact, I think the rest of the team does stay. It is the best team we've got. Let's do it. I mean, it's a slight risk, potentially, playing, you know, the same team again that did struggle against a Sheffield Wednesday. But we seem to play an awful lot better in the Champions League than we do in the Premier League. And maybe that is something to do with the quality of opponents that we've had in the Champions League. Or maybe we just turn it on for the big occasion. Who knows? But I would like to think... Well, let's not get too ahead of ourselves, but I'd like to think we are the better team than Porto. Obviously, they're here in the knockout stages of the Champions League. They've got here on merit. They are a very, very good team. But oh, I'd, I'd like to think we're better. With the reigning Premier League title holders, we got knocked out in very, unf I say, unfortunate circumstances. We just didn't turn up in the Champions League semi-finals last season. But we got knocked out then when really I feel like we should have won the whole Champions League. But... You can only beat what's in front of you. And I, I don't want to get too, you know, like, we've scored a goal. I'm not going to get too excited about it just yet because I've seen how badly things have gone wrong for us this season. And it makes me very nervous this season. I don't think I actually mentioned it in the video, to be fair. But if you saw on Twitter the other day, um, there was a screenshot at one point where I think the Brentford manager got sacked. And then in the sack race was me. I was in the sack race. And this was at a point when we lost a few games in the Premier League. And suddenly I was like one of the favourites to get sacked in my job. I think we have turned it around at this stage. But it has just shown how poorly things have gone for us at points this season. And we've been in a very precarious situation as things have not gone very well. But as Perea bears down on goal, he can't make it too. I also just saw a Banal playing for Porto. Is that our former Banal? We can have a look at him at some point. But as Paniotov puts it into the middle, it's cleared away. Perea, though, on the ball into Paniotov. Was he offside there? I think he was offside. And yeah, the referee's put his flag up. And yeah, free kick has been given. Porto's stats, though. Uh, oh, it's not Miguel Banal. It's Andreas Banal. So not the same Banal that we used to have. But uh, it was playing in a fullback position, which made me think it maybe was him. Luis Felipe, though. Back to Hoyer. Into Tarpe, into Luis Felipe. If we can grab a second goal here, this would really alleviate some of my stress at the start of this Champions League tie with Jez Finley pulling it over the bar. So 30 minutes or so on the clock. Uh, we have been running the show so far. and We've looked a lot more comfortable in this game than the game against Sheffield United. But as Nice has now got his chance to bear down on goal, he actually puts that one in the back of the net for his 27th of the season. He has been the man for us so far this year. And Pereira hasn't been firing. Or maybe it's a case of Nice stepping his game up a little bit. But the false nine is bagging in goals as if he actually was a number nine. Beautifully turned his man there. And how does he get this shot on the back of the net? The keeper, I think, makes quite an error to be fair. But it's not bad. And that will give us a little bit of breathing room for the rest of this game. And hopefully for the second... Le well, let's... Okay, it's not giving us any breathing room because they've scored a goal immediately, Porto. Uh, not ideal for us, but... I don't know where the butt was going, if I'm honest with you. I've no idea where it was going. I'm panicking now again. I'm panicking because I've seen us fall apart in these sorts of situations this season. It's so, I don't understand where it's all going wrong. Thrash the arms, far from pleased from what I've seen from his team out there. Far from pleased. Far, far, far from pleased. I, I just can't explain it. All we've done is change three players. That's all we've done this season, really. And they've all been improvements in the team. As Nice does get us back in front in this game, in off the post. Maybe those three players, or, you know, goalkeeper two defenders, maybe that's enough to unsettle the back line enough for it all to kind of fall apart. They've got to learn to play with each other, but I don't think that is the case. 
Maybe other teams have realised what we've been using for the past like three, four, five seasons. They've worked it out. They know how to play against it now, maybe. Maybe they are being proactive against it. Or maybe, maybe I'm just rubbish at the game. Who knows? But I, I am concerned. I am concerned still. But Champions League knockout stages, of course, we are playing against the best teams in Europe. So, you know, maybe this is to be expected. It's not going to be quite the walkthrough that the group stage was, for example. But as Tar plays on the ball... Paniotov into Pereira, into Daniel Patrick, who shoots from distance, saved by the keeper, flicked around the post, and that was a good chance gone mip, gone, gone begging, is that the phrase? It might be. Corner, is this going to go in the back of a net? No. If we can just hold on to the advantage here in the first leg, this would be great for us heading to our place. I've got lots of confidence when we play at home and hopefully Paniota with a great challenge there in the midfield is going to find a way for us to extend our two low... <sighs> yep, I knew it was going to happen. As soon as I started messing that sentence up... At least we scored. At least we scored. That's the main thing, right? Uh, Perea getting that one back to uh, Daniel Patrick, who fires that one in the back of the net to restore the two-goal lead that we once had, then lost, but have got it back again. That's the point and sentence I was trying to say, but tripped over my words. Vasco Sousa is going to come on for Jez Finley, who's looking quite tired out there, not playing particularly well. And could we potentially grab another one out there? Could we grab another one as Paniotov? Finds Tarpe into Vasco, Vasco to Perea, and Perea. No, he can't. And so as the clock ticks down here today, uh, we do win 4-2 in the end, which is fantastic. But we made a bit of a meal of it. Oh, I've looked at the camera and it's it's run out of battery. I mean, quite a good timing at the end of the episode, but I didn't I didn't spot that at all. Usually it gives me a bit of a countdown. I didn't spot that at all. Luckily, we have just finished the episode, so I guess you don't need my face to tell you that we are going to play uh, Porto and Manchester United next time out in two crucial games, which really could be make or break for our season. Beat Porto, we're well on our way in the Champions League. Beat Man United, we could be back on our way towards the title if other teams slip up, but only if we win both of those games. So thank you very much for watching today. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Of course, if you have done, make sure you do drop a like on the video for me. Subscribe if you're new around here and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. I will see you next time. Have a good one. Goodbye.